So next up, our speaker is Chris Gannon. Chris is an independent interactive designer, illustrator, and animator who started his commercial career in flash design in 1997. When he's not producing for clients, which include most of the big tech industry players, ooh, um, he's experimenting and sharing designs, scripts, and uh, oh, sorry, experimenting with SVG and sharing designs, scripts, and animations. A little fun fact about, fun fact about Chris, uh, he claims to have once snorted a poppadom. So, will you please give a lovely big round of applause and welcome um, Chris Gannon to the stage. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hello. Are you all full now? Yes? yes. Good. Uh, my talk um, is not on the screen um, yet. Um, my name's Chris Gannon, sorry. I am an interactive designer, um, illustrator, and animator. <laughs> um, and I don't do anything. Oh, I do. Um, uh, and uh, I want to talk to you about um, my sort of uh, journey from... I used to do a lot of Flash back in the day, and when Flash died, <clears throat> I realised that uh, I didn't really know any JavaScript, any CSS, any HTML. I didn't know anything. So I had to kind of start everything from scratch again. And it was really, really scary. Uh, and so I, I, I sort of I want to talk to talk about all the little kind of rabbit holes that I go down. And my talk is called The Almighty Rabbit Hole. And, you know, I found that sort of learning lots of small little things, um, you know, eventually sort of uh, build into much bigger things. But they always start small. And you have to start right at the beginning when you don't know anything, and I didn't know anything. Um, uh, so I kind of had to start back at just pure animation. Um, in Flash, I was doing a lot of coded stuff, and you know, Flash is very um, uh, flexible. It lets you do all sorts of things, and I was doing all sorts of crazy stuff, and when I came out the other end, I was like, I don't know how to do anything. Uh, so again, I had to start from nothing. And I decided to start with very simple things like a box jumping up to look out of a window. Um, this is kind of a squash and stretch style sort of thing that, uh, you know, like the very, very basic animations that uh, you, you all have to learn, really. Uh, this is the Wi Fi symbol that I turned into a wiper. Uh, and this is a pig jumping up and down. Um, and uh, the, all the things that I'm going to show you, they're all SVG animation. They're all sort of in, in the browser, uh, animated with uh, JavaScript. Uh, and they. Um, Lots of these things are very small um, experiments in things like this one's like secondary animation. So the pig jumps up and down and its ears sort of go backwards and forwards and its tail goes up and down. Uh, and, and this is question stretch and uh, you know, this is, I don't know what that is really, it's just a small little animation. Um, this is called uh, exercise. <laughs> I'm a dad now, I'm allowed to like, do these things. Um, and, you know, it's like a walk cycle. I, by the way, I've got a, like a real big problem with eggs. Um, I put eggs in a lot of stuff, and when I look, up, look back at the stuff I've done, eggs, like, appear a huge amount in my stuff, and I don't know why. I, I, I think there's, there's something sort of multi-state about eggs. You know, they start off as, you know, multi, they can be multi-different multicolors, and then you can crack them, and then they're see-through with yellow, and then they go white and yellow, and then you can mix them up, and then they go yellow. Um, but there's something about eggs that I've got a real big problem with, uh, and you'll find out later. Um, so I sort of started doing sort of some, some fairly basic animation stuff, like morphing and um, like lines and um, like speed lines, starting to add a little bit of dynamism. But really, everything that you're seeing so far is very sort of what I call static animations. Um, they don't, they're always the same. They never change. There's no sort of dynamism. There's no sort of code particularly. There, there is code, but it's not sort of everything. Every time you see it, it's the same. Um, and I'd sort of um, you know, move along with sort of... Uh, these are the kind of things that I wanted to do with my mouse, but I actually had to animate them to look like I could do them with, um, you know, interactivity, because I couldn't do any activity, uh, interactivity at the time, because I didn't know how JavaScript worked particularly in terms of, you know, um, all the sort of mouse events and stuff like that, so I would animate them instead. Uh, and this is just a suite of stuff that I made for my site. Um, I did a lot of icons because icons are a, they're a, they're a great small space to do. You have to pack a lot in 
to, um, into an icon. Uh, you, you know, there's a lot of, um, uh, you have to be very, very um, accurate with what you're doing. There's no, you can't have any fat uh, on the bone. It has to be, you know, accurate and definite. Um, and, uh, you know, icons are a good place to, to sort of start any kind of animation process. Um, you know, they're very minimal and uh, they have to be um, direct. Uh, I think clients think we have this, these buttons uh, and, they do, and we don't have them. And ultimately, I think, you know, we would all like to have a sort of a make it pop button. I mean, how many people have been asked to make, do any of these things, make the logo bigger? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's a universal thing that we're asked to do. Uh, and uh, there is no, so I made an animation just to say, look, I have an animation that does it, but I don't have a button that does it. Um, this is basically, the, who uses SVG? Good, quite a lot of you, excellent. Uh, and um, uh, so, so, so this is kind of what SVG looks like. It looks like XML, basically, and it, and it can describe circles and ellipses and rectangles and lines and that sort of thing. Uh, uh, and so I use inline SVG, I use GreenSock. Does anyone use GreenSock or heard of GreenSock? Yeah, a few of you. Um, and it's an animation platform and it, it can animate any kind of value, basically. It doesn't have to animate web stuff. It, it just takes a value and just makes it do something. Uh, and obviously caffeine. Um, uh, and so, so that plus JavaScript equals something like that, for example. Um, so over time, uh, I was learning sort of lots of small skills. Uh, and you'll notice these things cropping up time and time again in the stuff that I'm doing. This is called like a, ra a rainbow rocket man. And, um, it has these speed lines that you saw in the lollipop, um, and I'm introducing things like these sort of bubbles for, um, uh, for the jets, and there's a bit of shake, uh, and there's like a nested, the Wi-Fi animation thing sort of is in there as well, uh, and I'm sort of, I'm, I'm starting to build, and I got a bit of, start getting me a bit obsessed with these, um, uh, these speed lines, and I just start adding speed lines to lit literally everything that I did, um, just to sort of add a bit of motion, and these ones are going horizontal whereas the other ones were going vertical. It's different. Um, uh, what's next? Oh, yeah. So, um, and so moving on, so building on that, I'd kind of take, so in the, in the Rocket Man animation, I was doing all those sort of bubbles, and they were sort of bubbling up, and I kind of thought, oh, I could do some liquid that kind of looks similar. And so I sort of built this uh, sort of liquid simulator, uh, and, and it looked OK. Um, and I thought, actually, well, you know, a fountain or a, a waterfall, you know, splashes out. So I started experimenting with um, particle systems. And particle systems are just basically taking lots and lots of um, small elements and just making them, giving them gravity and giving them um, physics, basically. Uh, and it kind of added a huge amount to, um, you know, to, to, to the actual um, static animation. And I, it, it kind of made me think, you know, these animations don't need to be um, just static, the same thing over and over again. And because we're on the web, we're running a like a, a, like a live engine, a JavaScript engine. We, you know, they can be, they can be anything. It can be, you know, variable, random variables. And so every time you look at it, it's different. Uh, and this was like a big sort of revelation. I, I came from a sort of video background years and years ago, and you know, you could do this kind of th kind of thing in video, but. Once you'd rendered the video, you'd made a video, it was the same all the time, every time you looked at it. And to me, that's yeah, it's a bit boring. You know, I want something different all the time. I have a very short attention span, uh, as do many people. And the same, so now particles were the thing. I'm doing particles in everything. Uh, and <laughs> this is like an orange juice thing. It's nonsense. It doesn't mean anything. Um, and I kind of think... You know, nonsense is a, is a big part of, of, uh, of what I'm doing because um, you don't necessarily need a reason to do things. I think som sometimes we get hung up on a reason to do things and there is no, no definite reason to do anything. Often they're just pra you're just practicing something and you need something to hang that practice on, you know. So you just create something that doesn't mean anything. So going, f sort of taking that whole... Um, particle thing a little bit further and I'm thinking well okay I've had particles that were just sort of amorphous blob particles they didn't do anything why not style those particles and so have them like so each particle is a randomly selected heart or a bubble uh, but not only that 
have uh, an animation at the end of those. So you may be able to see that each one bursts with a little tiny animation that continues the sort of the, the, the physics. Um, and this was kind of, you know, a pretty exciting uh, development for me, anyway. Uh, I felt like I was getting somewhere. Um, I sort of touched on nonsense, and over the time that I've been doing this, I realized that I'm, um, I'm sort of applying lots of, well, I, I'm applying my own kind of principles to things. Uh, and one of those principles, or one of those sort of um, characteristics, is nonsense. I love nonsense. Um, there's something about something that's nonsensical that, uh, that really resonates with people because I think their brain is constantly wrestling with what that means and they never come to a sort of a resolution. So it's, it's constantly interesting. Uh, something nonsensical is, is always quite interesting. Uh, like a robot, picking up a robot and saying, stay there. No, I said, stay there, etc. cetera. Uh, so uh, the, 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 sort of the, the next sort of um, obvious evolution from, from sort of single state animation was toggles, and I love toggles. Uh, and toggles are, <laughs> they're sort of dual state. So you have one state and then you have another state. And it was a good way of adding simple interacti uh, interactivity, i.e. a click, uh, and it, it goes to a different state. Uh, and this was a nice little evolution for me, sort of, you know, I was doing baby steps here, really, um, because, um, t taking steps too far, you, know, you get confused and then you lose confidence and then you think, oh, pfft, I'm not doing it anymore. Um, and so, uh, yeah, this is like a sort of a futuristic door, um, a door handle you can press. I'm, I'm sort of fascinated with uh, sci-fi doors and stuff like that. This is, um, you know, daytime, nighttime toggle. And uh, any Star Wars fans, we've got this, um, uh, the dark side and uh, obviously the Jedi toggle. Uh, and sort of wobble toggles, taking the, sort of the idea of toggles and doing something different. Instead of something going from left to right, why not have it coming from the other way, you know? Uh, a voting toggle, um, uh, a bubble toggle. Uh, and again, all those bubbles are randomly generated. It's never the same twice. Um, uh, and, and talking of sort of randomness uh, and nonsense. So I'm, I'm starting to mix sort of randomness and nonsense here. Uh, this is called Wimbledon toggle. And uh, it doesn't mean anything. Um, but I had this idea in my head about sort of um, randomness and how you could introduce it into something as simple as a toggle. And believe it or not, there is randomness in this toggle. And that is, when you click on the, when you click on the toggle, it rotates the ball. And it rotates the ball randomly every single time. Um, now, it's a very sort of, it's a very subtle thing. And not many people will notice, although I did actually have a few messages from people saying, hey, I've just noticed your Wimbledon toggle, the ball changes every time. I was like, yeah, you noticed. Um, and they're like little kind of Easter eggs, you know, little kind of things that you put in there, that I put in there, that if they get noticed, great, but they're, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're there to keep me amused as much as anyone else, you know. Sushi toggle. Sushi, anyone like sushi? Cucumber. Or, or salmon. I don't know what, honestly, I don't know what half these things are for. Um, uh, and bauble toggle as well. <laughs> Do you want a green ball, a bauble, or a red bauble? Uh, but now, interesting. This one is. Um, uh, I, I imagine a lot. Do, do a lot of you use CSS? Hands up who uses CSS a lot. Yeah. See, I don't know CSS at all. Um, uh, and, but I do know that uh, in, in SVG, this is called, um, there's, a, there's a thing called patterns, uh, and in CSS, it's called back, uh, background repeat, when you can have a repeating pattern that does something, uh, and, and pattern in SVG is the same, uh, and you can have, and so basically the stars are just a, like a repeating pattern, uh, and you just add a, you know, I added a little bit of gradient or whatever, and then when it moved, the pattern moved, you know, sort of left to right and change color, and it sort of added that sort of pseudo 3D effect, um, which, um, which I was kind of trying to achieve. Egg toggle, obviously I have an egg toggle. Uh, and again, it's, it's sort of, it's, it's, it's kind of a nonsense. It doesn't mean anything. Uh, I think I was just trying to, I thought, oh, I wonder if I can um, animate a sort of an egg flipping over. And then I kind of thought, oh, I'll make a toggle out of that, uh, as you do. 
Uh, and burger menus. No, it's a pizza menu and it's a hot dog menu. Uh, burger menus were like a really big thing kind of, you know, years ago or a few years ago. Uh, and I kind of thought, no, I'm not doing burger menus. I'm going to do a hot dog menu or, or a pizza menu. Uh, and yeah, again, it's sort of a, a, an exercise in kind of morphing. You know, Greensock does a great, has a great library for morphing stuff. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, try out a few of those. Do something a little bit different from, from the sort of standard burger menu sort of stuff. Um, another one of the sort of principles that I sort of want to inject into all my work is humor. You know, humor is universal. Um, and, um, you know, I, I like to put in things that make me laugh. Uh, and hopefully, um, they will make other people laugh. I don't set out to make other people laugh. Um, uh, it, it, does, it just doesn't work. Uh, and so this is the happy, sad toggle. You know, you can, I imagine in the future you wake up and you can just press it and say, I'm sad today. I, I don't want to. I don't want to go out into the future city. Um, so back to sort of the, the sort of evolution. So, um, so toggles are a sort of a, a two-state progress, um, uh, a, a, a two-state animation. Uh, and then you've got sort of like pagination and things like that and, and radio buttons. Uh, and I didn't want to do the same kind of thing for pagination. So wh what I wanted to do was suggest that maybe the page had some depth to it. And then you've got this little kind of dot that's running around behind, like trying to keep up as you click into the various different spots. And you can kind of see it as it jumps from one to the other. And I kind of thought it just added a little bit of dimension uh, to, to the page. Um, uh, and again, this, after I put that out, um, I was hired to, to make this, um, which w was actually a paid, actual paid work. Um, I do get paid sometimes. Uh, 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 and, but I've changed, the, I've changed the icons, otherwise uh, you'd know who it was. Uh, and again, it, sort of, uh, you know, it was just sort of showing uh, the, you know, the, the sort of button zooming behind, whatever, and just giving that depth. This was for a kiosk, actually. Um, Splat buttons, radio buttons that are splatty. Um, because why not? You know, it's fun. It, uh, you know, radio buttons are boring. You know, let's, well, why not make them sort of all gooey and splatty? Um, and you'll you'll see as well as you know over over time that I use this kind of a gooey effect um, that I'll, I'll talk about later. And um, uh, it's it's a, it's a kind of fun thing that you can add if if what you're doing isn't working. I tend to add goo to it just to sort of see if it spices it up. Naturally evolving from sort of toggles to sort of more stages of, you know, like pagination and that sort of thing. Sliders, sliders, I love sliders. I do make loads of sliders. And sliders are a kind of, they're more than just dragging stuff. They're like journeys from sort of one, one, one place to another. You can do a whole lot of stuff in that, in that oh, I'll make a, there you go, it's a nice big one. Um, uh, you can do a whole lot of cool stuff with sliders. Um, and they don't have to mean anything. Uh, they don't have to sort of, uh, oh, God. Uh, eggs, egg, to egg, to uh, no, egg slider, this one's called. It does, again, it doesn't mean anything. It's, but you notice it's got that kind of gooey thing going on. You know, I really dig that. Um, uh, burger menu, it's another burger menu. But this is a different burger menu. You can actually choose your own burger. Uh, with this slider, um, and uh, I think I, I, I think I was trying to sort of um, practice triggering animations um, based on where you'd sort of click. This is actually a staggered click, so it's notched. You know, it's not a smooth one, uh, and just triggering stuff, uh, triggering animations to happen. Um, you know, when you're when you're um, dragging around in your slider. Um, I was hired to do a, a slider for a client. The client said, you know, um, uh, the, you, you can't really see the value that you're changing when you're sliding. Um, and I, so I, I came up with this idea of having the value above your finger. It wasn't a particularly new idea. I just thought, well, I'll do that. And then in my spare time, I kind of thought, I just thought I'm going to add some goo to it. And I added some goo, and, uh, and magically it turned into this sort of lovely sort of balloon toggle, uh, balloon slider. Uh, and I added some inertia to it so you can throw it, and it goes, whee! and it sort of catches up, uh, and, uh, and again, it's got a whole load of goo in it. Massive, massive pod slider. Um, 
this slider, I was kind of thinking, well, that's all fine. All these are sort of relatively hard-coded sort of sliders. Uh, and this one is actually a dynamic slider. So you can actually add in a value, like for any value, four, six, whatever, and it will generate um, a slider for you, which is a whole lot more useful uh, than just a hard-coded slider that you have to manually change if you want to make it longer or, or whatever. Uh, and, and again, there's some goo on it as well, because, because goo is cool. More goo. I love goo. This is goo as well. Um, and uh, uh, the whole kind of social media thing of um, you know expressing your feelings uh, in a you know in an emoji um, sort of got to me, and I was kind of thinking, how can I how can I do my own version of that? So I made a nice gooey slider um, because that's how I communicate with people now through sliders and toggles. Um, when I was growing up. There was a lot of hand uh, hand drawn animation, and I, I always thought it was very sort of there was something very um, uh, comforting about hand drawn animations. Maybe it's because I grew up with uh, with a lot of it, um, and so I decided well, I'm going to make my own slider um, that is hand drawn. And this took bloody ages because every single element in it has to have about five or six frames uh, of animation in it, including all the numbers and everything, and they all have to be um, animated in their own sequence. Uh, and so I, I don't suggest that you play with this uh, on a laptop or anything on your lap because your laptop will heat up and boil you. Um, but uh, it was a fun little experiment anyway. Um, and, and not satisfied with the whole kind of horizontal thing, I kind of thought, well, I wonder if I can actually make sliders that are on curve. Uh, so I'm starting to sort of think, well, maybe I can do it, you know, a, uh, like a, a Bezier path um, sli uh, slider. Uh, again, taking some of the stuff that I'd learned before about something, you know, pop the, the value popping up behind, um, uh, and there's a bit of inertia on it. When you drag, it sort of takes a while to catch up. Uh, and I just want things to feel nice, you know, when you're when you're using them. Um, I want them to be fun. I want I want people to you know enjoy filling in forms or um, uh, or adding data or whatever. You know, something that's um, just out of the ordinary and a bit more, bit more fun, though, because you know, a lot of web stuff can be quite sort of boring and 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 staid. And um, uh, and this one again, it's uh, you know, it, I'm tracking the sort of where your mouse is, uh, and and uh, it's working and you know, it's wobbling the water um, based on um, where your mouse is and how fast you're 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 moving it. Again, nonsense is. You know, here <laughs> always. It doesn't really mean anything. I think I was thinking, well, you know, all those people that sit there with a litre bottle on their desk and they drink it all day and they can just go, eh, oh, this is how much I've drunk, eh, that's how much I've drunk. No one's ever going to do that. Um, but I imagine that they might. Um, this is. Um, I've forgotten what this one's called. I imagine it's called UFO slider. I think it is. Um, uh, and um, it, you basically drag the cow. Uh, and uh, I, I kind of wanted to. Um, I wanted to try out doing a little bit of parallax because again, pa around that time, parallax was all the rage. And I wasn't interested in making web pages that have parallax. But I thought, well, I'll make a sort of a cow in the desert um, at night. Uh, with, with a bit of parallax, so all the sort of you know the cacti at the front are sort of moving d at different rates to the um, to the mountains, uh, and there's a little Easter egg in this as well. So if you hold on for, uh, if you hold on to the cow for too long, um, the uh, the spaceship will abduct it and then spit it out. And it was just a, like a little fun kind of little fun uh, thing to find if you uh, if you played with it. Um, Pull to refresh stuff was all quite sort of um, uh, big around around this time as well, and I kind of thought I'm gonna I'm gonna do my own pull to refresh. And there's a story to this. So scientists go to another planet, they get your data, they find it, but they made friends with an alien. When they leave, the alien is sad. Oh, goodbye. And that one's that's that one. Um, so. A kind of a third thing, uh, the, yeah, uh, another thing that I wanted to, to, I want to add to a lot of my work is sort of details and surprise. You know, adding things in that are fun to find, um, uh, that you may not find, or just funny little details. And I was, and I was, I, I was practicing making a road. You know, just a mo road go up, and I thought, oh, actually, I can spin that over. Uh, and this was a little loader that I made, uh, and I didn't sort of let anyone know that you could click on it, but you can click on it, and it does that sort of. Um, uh, weird, I think it goes back, it end up looking like it's going backwards. 
Um, but you get that sort of weird isometric kind of uh, uh, effect, and I thought it was kind of fun. More eggs in a minute. Ooh. <laughs> uh, so loaders. So I started doing a lot of loaders. Um, loaders can be, um, you know, uh, something that just sits there and loops, or they can be connected to, um, you know, the amount that's being loaded. Uh, and, I, and I love making loaders uh, because they're kind of like... Um, animated icons, but they, you can be a bit more adventurous with them. You can do a lot in a little space. Uh, you can tell silly, silly stories and do silly weird stuff, more eggs. Uh, but eggs with goo, which uh, uh, is, in, is fun. Um, this, was, um, this, is, this is like a toaster um, loader. Um, I had it as an animation, and then I kind of thought, well, I don't, well you know, what about, um, you know, rather than it just sitting there sort of doing its toast thing, uh, make it interactive. So I made it interactive. Uh, and um, uh, people were saying, oh, this is really fun. You can actually make your own toast. And I'm like, yay, it's fun, you know. But again, it's something that's it's just there to find it if you want to. If you don't, it will just automatically make the toast after a while. Um, uh, because that's what happens with toasters. That's really real. Um, and some other loaders. Uh, home is where the heart is, and uh, I can't remember what that one's called, platform lo loader or something, uh, and like a sort of, uh, like an Excel spreadsheet thing, that was for a client, um, and yeah, just, just having fun, really, with loaders, because um, the person who is looking at them is usually bored, and they're waiting for something to happen, so why not do something that's that tricks your mind, or or is you know is is somehow sort of just interesting or fun, you know. Um, it's it's sort of showing people that you care about the fact that they're having to wait for something, uh, and making it interesting or as interesting as possible for them with a with a funny little loop. Uh, pizza loader. Uh, I love Lego, by the way. I have two children, um, and. Um, they love Lego, and I love Lego, and we love playing Lego together. We're always playing Lego together, and, and they love it when I, I often make sort of Lego things like this um, and show it to them, and they love it because it's sort of taking the, the real sort of uh, stuff that they play with and putting it on the screen, and they think it's amazing, uh, and I love doing it as well. So, um, you know, it's, it's a good way of sort of bonding with your kids um, uh, and bringing your, your, your work into, the, into their world. Um, uh, and, you know, I touched on um, loaders that have sort of data sources that can actually, you know, react to um, uh, the amount that's being loaded. And so uh, I actually made a few that are, um, that will actually react to uh, the, the amount loaded. Um, uh, and these, you know, I've sold quite a few of these because people seem to like them and they can actually be hooked in and they are actually useful. <laughs> uh, these ones aren't useful. This one's called um, Walking Time Bomb. Uh, and uh, Again, they're just sort of fun little things. <laughs> this is called Ducks in Boxes, because it's, it's ducks in, in boxes, um, and tubes and whatever. Um, so a, a while back, um, Someone on Twitter posted this video. And um, do you know what's coming? And someone on Copen needs to craft this preloader. I'm like, I've got you. I'm there. And I think um, it was one of those sort of it was one of those moments where I was kind of thinking I've I've learned so many little things, um, and I uh, you know I, I and I, I think this thing was like a gauntlet and it was like someone needs to make this into a preload and I suddenly took this uh, you know this really really seriously like I have to be the first person to do this, uh, and uh, and so I sort of went off and um, and it was almost like a test to myself to see if I could actually get something done quickly and fairly well I mean even the tail twitches look. I mean, come on, um, uh, and just get something done and out on Twitter within a few hours, you know. Uh, and it even has goo. You, it doesn't look like it has goo, but it does. The snow is all sort of like particles and goo and everything. So all these things that I've been kind of learning in small, uh, small little things that I've been learning, you know, can, are, are starting to converge into, into useless, things on Ooh, useless things on Twitter like this. Hang on. Excuse me. My ear has fallen off. Hello? 
Can you hear me? Super. Um, so um, back to back to like loaders and stuff. And so I'm, I'm kind of getting a bit more adventurous with loaders um, and adding in particles now. So this was a loader for um, for a site that um, uh, and. It, had, it has a live particle systems every time it sort of spins over and splashes. Uh, this one, I think I started with this one, um, and um, they're all hard-coded. Water is really hard to animate, basically, uh, and I, I sort of hand-coded all the ripples, and if you look at it enough times, you'll realize that it is a loop. It, doesn't, it never changes, uh, and I'm kind of getting, I was getting a little bit sort of, you know, yeah, I'm not, not into that. I want to do something that's dynamic, make the most of the web, you know, make the most of this live environment that we're in, so uh, these kinds of things were born out of the fact of a frustration of doing sort of uh, stat these static animations, and again with this one, uh, you'll notice um, that the, uh, the, the the sort of jets are actually the same jets from the Rainbow Rocket guy, um, just with a stroke basically. But it's using the same kind of technique, and this is for a client, this is for landing line. Um, um, so randomness um, is another thing that um, y you'll notice that I'm putting into a lot of the stuff that I do. It's really important. There's something very um, there's something that keeps interest with randomness. Um, lots of, um, uh, lots of uh, randomness can sort of uh, keep, yeah, keep interest, uh, and it can also. I think it feeds into sort of uh, like quite a sort of uh, a deep part of the human psyche. You know, notes whether we notice or not. Um, when things are random, um, they don't seem boring. Um, and, uh, and I try and put randomness into things as much as possible. Um, and so this is kind of, randomness is fine, but I wanted to do some more controlled randomness. And so setting a sort of a random set of particles, but along a sort of path, and you can just see the sort of highlight of a, a, a profile of a face. Um, and again, another little test to sort of see if I could control particles in a sort of, you know, have a sort of framework um, uh, and have sort of randomness within that framework, you know. Um, th this is called Fire Loader, and it started out um, on, uh, this was an original design by someone on Dribble, but it was a very, very simple design, and it was a static design. And someone had, um, so, uh, had, had sort of made a, a nicer static version, and I thought, you know, I really want to make this into a complete, fully interactive uh, fire that you can actually click and it will fire up these sort of, you know, this, these smoke particles and, and, uh, and, and um, sparks and that sort of thing. Uh, and people buy this. I have this on my site. And pe loads of people buy this. And I think they have it on, like, big TVs, and they can go around and they can press it. And it's like a sort of a digital fire <laughs> that they have in their house. I don't know what they do with it. I think they do. But, I mean, the nice thing about um, SVG is that it's completely scalable. So you can have a massive version on any screen. It'll always look nice and crisp. Um, uh, and this is, like, your perpetual pencil as well. I... Around the time of, of, of Perpetual Pencil, um, I was being asked to do a lot of, um, uh, you know, signatures being drawn, you know, like a, almost like a by a pen. Um, and I think clients thought, oh, there's just a little button or there's something that you press to make something get drawn out, and it, there isn't. Uh, is really hard, uh, it's really laborious work to sort of get stuff to be drawn out. And so I, I wrote um, a library uh, that will take any kind of SVG set of paths and it will put them in an order uh, and then it will start drawing them for you. But you, what, you can all, what it also does is allows you to um, attach something to that, that point. As it's drawing, you can attach something to the point. So this is, I, I, I put the, the pen, uh, the pencil path into the library uh, and attached a pencil uh, I also put a pe a pe attached a pencil to it, uh, and it would start drawing itself, uh, and then this sort of like uh, pencil inception thing going on. Uh, and um, and this is um, uh, it was just a simple nonsense loader that was just sitting there, um, and I never told anybody. But actually, what you can do is you can click it, and it kind of wobbles the water. It's really simple, but people sit there and click for hours and just let this thing go. <laughs> You know, it, often I find it's the kind of the simplest things that that resonate the most with uh, with people, and and it's it's fun, you know. Ah, liquid and goo. Um, 
as I was saying earlier, liquid is really hard to do. Uh, and and goo doesn't necessarily kind of um, uh, doesn't necessarily cut it like this particular thing is called goo bubble and it it has a sort of a liquid animation in it but it also has goo applied to that liquid so when the things bubble out they've got that sort of amorphous blobby kind of uh, thing to them uh, and you'll also notice that when they pop they have a little animation on the end of it so. Lots of the techniques that I was learning from, you know, love and bubbles, animation with the lorry going up and down, you know, I'm taking those kind of things and applying them to new things. Uh, and so it's constantly a layering process of your skills that, you know, learning over and over time and just feeding them back into new work um, uh, to, 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 to sort of try and make things more interesting and try and move things, move things along. Uh, this is actually a logo for, and I can't remember who the logo is for, um, uh, but it was, uh, I was using some SG, SVG filters. I don't use SVG filters very often. It's like a displacement filter, and you notice it's a little bit shaky, and it's, um, but uh, SVG filters can be very, very processor intensive, uh, and I tend not to use them that often, apart from in Goo, um, because uh, they, they, yeah, they make your computer um, fry. Uh, and this is like a nice liquidy one. Uh, again, it's kind of nonsensical, doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it's, fun to t it's fun to play with. And the whole thing has a little bit of inertia, you know, it's sort of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the liquid level sort of wobbles um, based on how fast you were going. Um, and this is like a smart house temperature gauge. I love, I, I have a fairly smart house, it's fairly smart. I've got some Alexas. Does that make my house smart? I don't think so. Um, uh, but I also have some other, th other bits and pieces. And I'm kind of fascinated with, the, um, with, with smart house devices. And I build quite a lot of them, uh, like prototypes and stuff. And this is just like a temperature gauge. But it's a fun one. You know, it's kind of more fun um, uh, than some of the sort of nests and, uh, and hives of this world, you know. Um, does anyone here actually animate with SVG? One, two, oh, crikey, <laughs> three or four. OK, um, so not very many of you. But um, I, the, I, I'm talking about this, goo, this whole goo thing. And I, kind of, I, I want to kind of show that it's actually relatively straightforward to do. Uh, you just apply, uh, you apply a blur to all the stuff that's moving around inside a group. Uh, and then you can uh, apply um, a, a filter called S, uh, Fe Color Matrix. Uh, and it will sort of boost the transparent areas um, so, so that all of those um, overlapping areas boost together. Uh, and they, they create this liquid. It's, uh, I just thought I'd just drop that in there because lots of people say, oh, how do you do this goo? And that's how you goo. Uh, and you can do kind of like, this, this is all SVG, uh, like lava lamps um, uh, that you can make. And uh, you know, they're, 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 you know, they're quite realistic, really. And again, it's completely random. It will just sit there. And um, uh, again, people have bought these um, uh, because they like just having them on digital displays in their house, I presume. Um, but they're nice. Uh, a bit more of a, this is for DigitalOcean. Uh, this is a bit more of a sort of a, a, an adult version of Goo, uh, where uh, there's some sort of radiating stuff. And they see, see how they join together, the sort of uh, the areas join together. Um, and this is just this, this is lovely, silly version. Uh, and again, this is just sort of like a nice, beautiful thing to just stare at, and it doesn't do anything. But they're all examples of, of, of how, you know, diff different um, applications of Goo. Um, anyone use After Effects? Oh, oh, quite a few of you. Okay, well, it's been around for a long time, so I would expect probably more people. Anyone heard of Body Moving? Cool. So Body Moving is now called Lottie. Um, and it's, uh, it's a way of exporting your vectors from After Effects uh, to a web player, basically, a JavaScript web player. Uh, and this, <laughs> this is, um, I, I wanted to do a sort of a mixture. Oh, it's my banana. Um, I wanted to do a sort of a mix, so I, I, I created the animation in After Effects, exported it as Lottie, uh, and then created interactivity on top of it with JavaScript and, uh, uh, and GreenSock. Uh, to, and you know, it's changing the time, uh, the time, uh, um, time frames, uh, and, and changing the um, the elements that the thing was holding. Again, it's, it's a Lego head running along with a microphone and a pencil and an ice cream. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything, but again, it was just like another little experiment in 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 mixing things together. And you know, with interactivity, 
I don't necessarily think interactivity is clicking and dragging and stuff. It's the way other things interact, you know, software and, and hardware and libraries and whatever, they, how they interact. It's, it's a very broad remit, interactivity, for me. It's not just um, our input into, into, a, into a, a, a system or a, an animation or whatever. Um, as I said, I, I play, I, I, you know, my children and I play Lego all the time, uh, and, uh, and often we need a piece and we don't have a piece, so I made the, the Lego uh, creator, and you can create your own piece of Lego that you need. It's obviously totally fucking useless, because you can't use it, um, but they think it's hilarious, and that makes me laugh, uh, and I love it, so, uh, and they love this thing, and they play with it quite often, so, um, you know, here's to that. <laughs> um, back to, uh, to exercise guy, I kind of thought, well, you know, um, why not add something, some of the things that I've learned, and I could not, at the time when I made this, I couldn't uh, export via uh, body moving, it didn't exist, and now I can, and now I'm thinking, well, I can actually add interactivity to my exercise uh, egg, uh, and, and so this was a result. I actually added a slider into the, con into the sort of conveyor thing, and, uh, and, it can make, and it can change the speed. And again, it was just like an interactivity between two different technologies to sort of come up with something uh, something a bit more interesting, something that sort of revisits something and improves it, takes it somewhere new, you know. Um, I do a lot of logo animation for clients, um, and uh, I get quite bored with logo animations that, that just do one thing. Oh, no, I don't get bored with it, uh, because this is being filmed. I don't get bored with it, I love them. Um, but what I kind of thought was, you know, I'm an interactive designer, why not make a logo that's interactive? And so you can basically play with this. If you decide to sort of move your mouse over it, you can play with it. And you can, and you can drag this uh, logo and, uh, and, yeah, and just sort of m mess around with it. And, uh, and again, we've got, we've got sort of different particles uh, that come out. They're slightly different all the time. So it's just a little sort of adding maybe some value to a brand, you know, making it, keeping it within their brand values, but making something interesting and more playful. And again, this is like a search, um, uh, like a search uh, box that does this. You know, it's fun, it's something different. Um, uh, and, it, and, you know, everything is done within the A, you know. It's, uh, um, I started a couple of Twitter accounts for my children when they were very young because they said some really weird stuff, like really weird. Uh, and I, and, uh, and I, uh, every time they said something weird, I tweeted, it was private. Um, uh, uh, this, how accurate is this? Stormtroopers, they don't have very good aim. I mean, that's nothing to do with what I'm talking about, but that, that, I thought that was very, well done you. Um, and, uh, and so I thought, okay, well, I've, so anyway, I've amassed these, all these weird things that my children have said over the years. This is going somewhere. I love um, Penguin book covers. I love the design of them. They're all quite different, but they're all within a framework. Um, and, you know, I just think there's something really sort of, the, the typography and everything's beautiful on them. And so I kind of thought, well, why don't I make a load of um, Penguin books out of the, chil the things that my children say? Uh, and so I've, I'm gonna drag a dead body onto my face. I'm so excited. <laughs> my dear. When you, when, if your child ever says that, there's certain, a certain level of worry that starts to creep in. Uh, what animal does bacon come from? Camel, elephant, diver. Uh, and any, and so, so I'd, I'd made these and I kind of thought, I'm gonna make them into um, uh, uh, actual proper physical things and give them to my wife. Uh, and so I made all these um, uh, pictures for my wife made of all the things that my, weird things my children said. Um, so this is my inspiration formula. Quick, take a picture, it's gone. Um, <laughs> I, I kind of want to end with, with these sort of things that, uh, that I find important. I, I indulge, indulge your obsessions, I indulge my obsessions. You know, I love Lego, I love eggs uh, for some reason. Uh, and, and it's important, it keeps interest. When you're, when you're doing, when I'm doing work, um, and I'm, I'm working with something weird that, 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 that I love, it, it, it keeps me going, it's, uh, it's, it's fun. Um, I get inspiration from everywhere. Uh, has anyone seen Westworld? Westworld, a few people. So Westworld, uh, they have these amazing tablets and they control all these robots, and this is basically one of the, one of the sliders on it. It was so random, I just thought, oh, I love that, so I'll make my own. 
Um, random, but it's true. Uh, and um, finally, progress is really subtle. Sometimes you kind of feel like you're not really going anywhere. You're just learning all these small little things. Um, but after a while, they add up to something huge. They add up to basically a skill set. Um, uh, and sometimes you feel like you really aren't getting anywhere. And after a while, when you know, you're suddenly asked to make a squirrel slider online or whatever, and you can suddenly put all these things together, and it's, it's a great sort of way of giving yourself uh, confidence that um, you haven't been wasting your time making sliders and toggles and that sort of thing. Uh, and that is the end of my talk. Thank you very much.